So I'll call the uh, Board of Selectmen regular meeting to order. This is a regular meeting, May 20th. Nothing feels regular, but this is. Um, uh, are there any ad additional agenda or consent calendar items? Oh, let me hit the record button. Let me start it. Let me start over. So much better when, oh, we are recording. My apologies. It's an automatic recording. So are there any additional agenda or consent items? Seeing none, I'm going to unmute everybody on the call. If I hit this button, it's supposed to work. Um, and those that I guess, I don't, I don't know, it says unmute all. Would anyone like to speak in public delegations? Who's got... Who's got a TV going on in the background? I would. Okay, Joe, go ahead. Remind me to buy you an American flag and so we can do the Pledge of Allegiance for the meeting. Yep. Is that, is that your public delegation tonight? Well, it's a comment. Okay. Anything else, Joe? No. Okay. I'm just curious to see how this works. Oh, glad to have you. Your, your connection is much better tonight than it was at the water and sewer meeting. Uh, anyone else, public delegations? Uh, yes, I have my hand raised. This is Camille. Go ahead. Okay. Camille Alberti, Seven Members Court, Board of Finance Chair. I just pulled down the uh, agenda off of the town website, and I see there is an agenda item, seven new business, a discussion, public safety building plan. That was amended from the prior agenda which said uh, discussion of possible action. So I'm really not sure what you all are planning to do tonight with regard to the public safety building discussion, but I would like to make a public comment in that I am asking the Board of Selectmen tonight to suspend any and all PSB special appropriation requests unless and until there is a plan in place to conduct a safe and fair referendum. I think that's there's- why we're not, That's why we're not having it tonight, ma'am. Okay, well, I just pulled the agenda down off of the website, so I'm just going based on what's been posted. Okay. Seven new business A discussion, public safety building plan. It's a discussion, it's not action. Okay, okay, very good, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, great. Um, then we'll, um, I'm gonna mute everybody and then um, mute all, if that's possible. Um, and then I'm gonna unmute you uh, Board of Selectmen members. On just a minute. Where'd you go, Roseanne? There you are. I think I got you all now. So approval of the minutes, regular meeting, May 6, 2020. Move to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 6, 2020 as submitted. Second. Motion and second. Any further comment, corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Terrific. Um, consent calendar. Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of May 6th, 2020 in the amount of, May, uh, let's, let's change that to May 20th, 2020 in the amount of $3,883 and 31 cents. I'll second. You owe me, Sandy. Motion and second. Uh, any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstain? Terrific. We'll go to old business. Um, Joe Bragal, let me get you uh, on a mic here. Terrific. We are, um, there's a discussion about SCARA ordinance amendment. And uh, we want to, uh, after this discussion, we want to schedule, schedule a public hearing, which will take the form of a Zoom meeting. It's an administrative uh, public hearing. Uh, we're changing where we're delivering the trash to, but in the, original ordinance uh, for SCARA, we have a very specific 
place that we're taking the trash to, and we have to change that. And Joe, why don't you give us some background on that? Um, Scare, Scare, which is 13 towns regionally, has um, negotiated a very favorable contract for all our member communities, East Line being one of them. Um, and it's going to now be sending our trash instead of to Pres Preston incinerator uh, when you cross the bridge over by Mohegan Sun. That's where we used to take it. We're going to be sending it up to Lisbon, which is the smokestack as you go up 395. It's about eight miles more away, but it's very easy to get it out of. But very much better, advantageous. I want to say it's $68 a ton. Uh, whereas most everywhere else in the state spend in 90 to 100. Um, but as uh, Mark said, in the ordinance, the, the East Lines ordinance, it specifically says to take all the trash to Preston. So the wheel of braider contract is required that all towns have to revise their ordinances to say it's going to Lisbon. It's a technicality, but it does require, as Ed O'Connell, our town attorney, says any amendments to any um, town ordinances have to go to public hearing. So we've been kind of waiting it out and waiting it out. But the problem is that it has to, that has to be signed, this uh, agreement with all scary towns by the end of June, and we're running out of time. So this is the last meeting in June, uh, in May. Um, <clears throat> what I'm requesting is that we set up a public hearing before the next, so the first meeting in June. I'm not exactly sure how that will work. Uh, we could figure out, we figure out other things, but it really has to happen then because if we wait till the end of June and something hiccup goes, I don't want to run the risk of jeopardizing scare is complete uh, 130,000 ton a year uh, agreement because we're one of few towns that unfortunately didn't get it done right before uh, the COVID just from a, to, you know, we didn't get it into the board of selectmen. So this has to be done. Um, and what I'm asking is that the Board of Selectmen um, um, schedules a public hearing for ne the me next meeting, which uh, Ed O'Connell put together all the paperwork um, for that. Terrific, I'll take a motion, then we can have discussion. Um, you, motion to schedule a public hearing, you mean, yeah. or you wanna? Yeah, we, we could do that. Let's do a motion to schedule the public hearing, then we can have discussion about that and ask any questions. Okay, notice is hereby given of a public hearing to be held by the East Line Board of Selectmen on June 3rd, 2020 via Zoom meeting beginning at 7.15 p.m. to receive comments regarding proposed amendments to the following ordinance entitled an ordinance regulating the storage collection and disposal of solid waste and providing for a system of refuse collection and disposal and the administration thereof. The proposed amendments are as follows. One, a new clause E is added at the end of section one. The, this municipality has executed a municipal solid waste management services contract with Southeastern Connecticut Regional Resources Recovery Authority, SCARA, including an amendment number five to such municipal solid waste management services contract collectively with such amendment five, number five to the, the MSA. The MSA defines the system, okay, defines the system, the SCARA system to include the solid waste disposable in a resource recovery facility, recourse, re recourse recovery facility located in Lisbon, Connecticut and operated by Wheel Operator Lisbon Incorporated or its successors or assigns the SCARA facility pursuant to the solid waste disposal agreement between SCARA and Wheel Abrader Lisbon Incorporated, the Wheel Abrader Agreement, and designates the SCARA facility as the facility within the SCARA system. Pursuant to the MSA, this municipality has agreed to deliver or cause to be delivered all solid waste as defined in the MSA, generated within the corporate boundaries of this municipality to the SCARA system as directed by SCARA for ultimate delivery to the SCARA facility for disposal, subject to and in accordance with the wheel abrader agreement. Two, a new clause C is added to section eight. All refuse generated in this municipality shall be delivered or caused to be delivered to the SCARA system for so long as the MSA remains in effect, as directed by SCARA, and for ultimate delivery to the SCARA facility. To the extent any such refuse is not acceptable for disposal at the SCARA facility, such unacceptable refuse shall be delivered or caused to be delivered to such other facility designated by SCARA. 
after the MSA is no longer in effect, the Board of Selectmen shall designate the facility for the delivery of refuse generating in this municipality. The person delivering refuse to the SCARA facility or other designated place shall pay any applicable disposal charge. All regulations of the town in any direction or designation by the Board of Selectmen or the director about the disposal of refuse generated in the municipality shall be consistent with this section 8C. Interested persons are invited to attend and be heard in East Lyme, Connecticut on this 20th day of May 2020, East Lyme Board of Selectmen. Second. It's a motion is second. So Joe, what did that all say? So basically, thank you. Everything in that you just said is in the, the first part that uh, Kevin Siri read about the, um, the E, all that basically, it's, it's two parts to the first section. One is that we have passed an MSA, which this board passed about six months ago. Just right. acknowledge that. And second, it just it mentions Lisbon and Wheel of Brader specifically. The, the, um, and then the second one, um, I mean, it, it's, and I know Dan is attorney, but it's the attorneys putting this together just to, uh, especially for Wheel of Brader, to make sure if they're giving such a good deal to the town of East Lyme and Scare that the trash is coming their way and that we have no way to wiggle out. And, and that, that was just very similar to what the, 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 the multi-year agreement we had with Covanta, and it's just true to this. So um, that's all it is, is, is just locking down that um, it's, the trash is going to press uh, to uh, Lisbon. And um, that's, what's, that's what's changing in this agreement, right? The, yes. The, that, not this the cost, it's not nothing. Um, how we location. handle trash, it's location. Location, and, and j just for your own gratification, this whole thing was given to uh, Ed O'Connell. He did not write this. He read it. He's very comfortable with it. I'm comfortable. So your, your attorney did not spend all the time creating this document. It was sent by SCARA. We reviewed it. Um, and uh, it's acceptable to the town attorney. It's acceptable to me. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Yes. yes Under section uh, three, the C, section C, uh, the trash that is not acceptable uh, for polite or for the arrow won't take what happens to that trash? Um, Stan, I'm trying to read where you said after this. Um, which sent to the oh, extent of any refuse is not acceptable for this. Was it scarce? So, what should we talk? Oh, so basically, if um, if the trash, uh, if there's like let's just for instance, there's hazardous waste that comes from an East Lime garbage truck and goes to uh, Lisbon then um, Lisbon's not going to accept it. It says it's unacceptable. It will be sent to wherever SCARA says it should be sent to. And SCARA, uh, that, that's what that is meaning, Roseanne. And does that mean an, an additional charge for us beyond that? Do we have to have an no. agreement with that facility? No, SCARA, SCARA covers all those costs. Okay, so that does, so it's up to them who they send it to and that's, uh, that's figured as part of our bill to SCARA. Uh, yeah, well, we, we, yeah, we don't all the, the only bill we have for SCARA is the, um, is the, um, uh, the tonnage fee that, the, um, what am I thinking, the subsidized tonnage fee that they charge us for, but there's no additional cost to the town of East Lyme if, if there's um, any kind of uh, unacceptable waste. It's just that, it's just so 13 different towns don't send something to 30, 13 different locations. Um, SCARA yeah. controls after it goes there, where it should go, and, and SCARA okay. would pick up the cost for that. All right, thank you. That's it for me. That particular example, what is the same that happens now where we're sending it to the, uh, the Preston plant or wherever we send it now, if, it, if this has hazardous material, it gets shipped off somewhere else, correct? Yes, but ironically, it sounds like such a bad word to say hazardous waste, but with a lot of people using chemo and the different products that they throw in the garbage, Sometimes that stuff gets picked up on um, on the scanners at the, the, the incinerator. So that's a very good example of something that would be identified that it's not going to be accepted at the new plant and that SCARA would have to send it someplace. But SCARA handles all that. The town of East Lyme and all the member communities of SCARA have a very sweetheart deal with SCARA. They, they're paying for their, all the recycling. It's, this, is, this is an absolute no-brainer for the town to be continuing to be, participate with SCARA. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Call a motion to schedule a public hearing. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Are there any abstaining? For the record, it's a unanimous vote. Terrific. Do you have to set a date of that or is it just that we're having a meeting? It is set, Joe, June 3rd. Was it right here? Okay, I, I didn't see that. Sorry. the public hearing. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joe, for stepping in. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is discussion of the public safety build a plan. I maybe just bring it up to date. Uh, maybe since our last meeting, um, the vision committee made up of members of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, Police Commission, members at large, and a few department heads um, unanimously voted for a plan to move forward uh, for the um, rehabilitation of that building, the reconstruction of that building to outfit uh, first responders in our town. Um, it's a 7.1 million dollar plan. Is that about right, Joe? 7.178586. Uh, right, right. Which of course, you know, um, is above what we anticipated and what we were hoping for. Um, it's, um, we, we knew it would be at least $6 million. Um, um, we were given 5 million initially, knowing that the other million would be uh, asked for, coming back for. Um, so we're at that's 7.1. So 2.1 and change um, is, is gonna be needed to finish the, the building as, we, as the vision committee sees fit. Um, I wasn't on the vision committee. I did act as the next officio um, to it. So where we are now is we're still negotiate, uh, navigating through the, um, the COVID situation on how to get this plan approved or at least through the appropriations process um, to a town meeting, which is required, um, a, re um, a referendum isn't necessarily required. Um, it is. It could be the will of the Board of Selectmen or through a petition. Um, that's how it goes. We are still working um, with our town attorney to work that out. Um, we have a major issue at our, our current police facility where the, the roof is now really pretty compromised and it can't last another year um, or delay even more so. Um, and we have some serious mold in the building. So I'm, while I'm rushing to get this thing done, I'm also struggling with a police force that's, that's in a building now um, and um, is unsafe. It's unsafe for the health, for the men and women of the police force and the, really the integrity of the building. Um, but I don't, I don't want to spend taxpayer money in that building. So we're working through that. We have been approved for $5 million, um, three of which we spent on the building, roughly. I'm using round numbers. Um, $2 million uh, for rehab of the building. Uh, we'll need $2 million more to complete the big vision, the big picture. I am looking at an alternate plan to take the $2 million that has been appropriated and approved. Um, and, and look to what can we, can we get the police in a corner of that building to keep them safe, uh, to get them out of the building they're in while we figure out whether we spend two, $2 million more or not. Um, it's up to the board of selectmen and the board of finance before it even goes to the public. Uh, we're working through that. Um, I, I applaud the vision committee because what they did is they took a whole long time. I think there were 40 meetings all in all from start to finish somewhere in that neighborhood of, of, of best value for the taxpayers. In other words, though we don't need an elevator in the building now, let's put one in now because eventually we're gonna need one and rather not putting in one, in one now and then ripping the building apart to put one in later makes no sense. Um, uh, that and HVAC systems and the wiring of the building and all that. So we're, um, we're going to have, the vision committee is going to have a meeting next week. Um, some members of the vision committee um, I'll pull together and we'll talk about um, alternate plans and a path forward. And we'll be meeting with the um, um, town attorneys or I have been meeting with town attorneys on um, a path through this schedule. Um, 
uh, comment from the public tonight said don't don't do this until we can have a um a referendum we we can have a referendum i mean they're having a um they're having a presidential primary and a state primary uh on august 11th or 21 or somewhere in the middle of august um so voting will be allowed there's also talk about doing a a, a vote by mail um so we'll, we'll we'll consider all the options they're all expensive options if you go to referendum um but it, we cannot have it uh, we've already inquired to the secretary of state we cannot have a referendum on the same day as the presidential primary so we might vote on wednesday for the presidential primary and then come back on thursday and have a, a referendum i don't know um but we're working through that um and i'll be meeting with paul and a few others uh, next week and we'll we'll try to find a path through that we also need a path um to to keep the police um, um safe in the meantime it's a nine month project so even if the, the you know the the contractor selected can start within five days of being awarded the contract you can start immediately but that's still a nine-month process and uh, you know maybe that means we could patch patch some things in there and, and, and bring an environmental company in there to uh, get some mold out of the building uh, i don't want to do a full rehab of that building uh, obviously um, if, if it's not ours and we hope to get out of there so that's not an option so more to come uh, on that on, on that public safety building. The good news is uh, the vision committee did an outstanding job um, really working through all the details to come up with a great product for, on behalf of the town. So uh, more to come. Any questions on that? Paul, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, I think uh, the, our meeting minutes uh, do show what, we, what yeah. the vision committee uh, worked with the architect and the contractor up with uh, you stated it's it's 7.1789 and uh we'll have to decide uh first the board of selectmen and board of finance and and, and potentially the public once you come through the that methodology on on what the what the town wants to invest in to, to bring this professional uh and functional building to the men and women that serve our town so roseanne's phone's ringing she's a very very busy lady Yes, I have. I can't get it to shut off. I'm sorry. <laughs> they won't out. hang up. I keep pushing the button. They won't hang up. They're insistent. Good, they're gone. No. All right, I'm just moving away from it. Yeah, it might have to turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah, I'm sorry that you're going through that. Right. Oh, I can't. So far. I'm. I'm trying to move away from it. They won't hang up. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. It just keeps going and going. All right. Paul, Paul, They're Paul, gone. Paul Diego, you did an amazing job. We you know, praised you uh, up and down several, several meetings. Um, <clears throat> uh, worked at, um, you were the right man for the job to chair that very, very difficult task and very delicate task. You did an amazing job. And my hat's off to all the members um, of the vision committee, many of whom are here tonight, Kevin and Dan and, um, um, and who am I missing? Kevin and Dan. That's, and Paul. Thank you. Uh, we're on it. Thank you. I, I knew there were three. Right. So our, our job's not done until we we bring forward a plan that everyone approves and we move forward with. Yeah, we. Um, it's unfortunate that with COVID going on, the economy's going to tank. Everyone's hurting. I get it. Um, I'll, I'll say this: that this should have been done 15 years ago. We shouldn't be here right now. We should have never put our police in a situation that they're in a, in a building um, or in temporary quarters. And we had an option for two different buildings a long time ago. And one of the two should have been done. Unfortunately, it was politicized and, and, um, and just got ugly. Not that this isn't um, an ugly situation, but we'll, we'll get through it. And we got to do something for the police at some point. So um, in the other departments, uh, we're hanging on. If there's nothing else, I'll move on. Uh, appointment to the boards and commissions. Uh, we, there is someone who wishes to serve on the Niantic River Watershed Committee, a great group of people that do so much for the environment. I'll move to appoint Susan Gonzalez, 44 Heritage Road, East Lyme, to serve as a member of the Niantic River Watershed Board for the town of East Lyme with a term to expire on January 3rd, 
2022. Second. Any comments? Great. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Are there any abstentions or uh, opposition to this? Then it'll be a unanimous vote. Terrific. There is uh, nothing on our agenda to say ex officio reports, but I will um, allow anybody who has any ex officio or any reports from town to um, jump up. Mark, uh, if I could just for water and uh, water and sewer for uh, parks and rec, sure. uh, they've had a really good turnout of town residents driving in up to the uh, little tent they have outside to purchase uh, uh, beach passes. So it's going really well so far. Um, I, I was talking to Dave and uh, Robin and Mike uh, today, and they were very pleased with the uh, turnout going on for the uh, purchasing of thick uh, of the passes because. Starting this weekend, you'll need the uh, beach pass to get into uh, McCook's hole in the wall and cheating. That's it. That's correct. So beach passes begin this Saturday morning, um, every weekend through the middle of June, and then every day from June on, bathrooms will be open when the when we're collecting beach passes. Um, um, you know, so the weekends for now, um, and, and, and the bathrooms would be the McCook's, the hole in the wall, uh, McCook's beach, not the McCook's upper, um, hole in the wall. And I believe Cheney as well. Um, um, the uh, trailer will be unlocked as well. Um, anybody else? Um, I, I wasn't able to participate, but the, uh, in the wetlands agency had their first land use meeting on Monday night. Uh, they spent the town and the staff spent a lot of time to come through yeah. how you could run a land use meeting uh, in this format. Uh, and uh, I haven't heard any, any negative items come out of that, but hopefully uh, it went well and they were able to accomplish some, some of the business to support some of the applications that have been uh, put on hold due to the COVID situation. Yeah, um, difficult to run a land use uh, meeting for sure. And um, in, in, in the content of that meeting was difficult as well. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. Anyone else? Uh, I don't have an ex officio, but I am a bit concerned about the upcoming weekend, which is supposed to be two weekends ago when it was good weather, the downtown traffic from the intersection of Penn and Main Street up all the way back to uh, by the up beyond the community church at one o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm concerned about uh, the amount of potential traffic uh, access. Roseanne, you're breaking up for some yeah. reason. Yeah, you're breaking up really oh. bad, Roseanne. I'm getting near a window, right. Roseanne. Now that the ringer is gone. I, I heard that the traffic, <laughs> your report started with the traffic on Penn and Main. Yes. Backed way up. I yes, that was two weekends ago when it was really nice and uh, the traffic was backed up. And then on Main Street, it was backed up back beyond uh, the intersection for Black Point. So that was just a regular nice weekend. Now we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up. I'm concerned about people who aren't town residents coming into town and finding out that they can't access the beach. So they'll throng, I would assume, on the boardwalk. And um, I just hope that uh, we're taking some extra steps here to make sure that we've got uh, extra people on, um, you know, patrolling the boardwalk area and also uh, that we've got a full complement of police officers on duty. Yes, we do. That's it. Thank you. I hadn't heard about the backed up traffic. I, we were busy um, a couple of weekends ago. Um, I, I wonder if it was residual from an accident or something um, because there's no reason for it to back up that much, but you're right. People are, are out and about and we are going to have, um, a busy weekend, there's no doubt about it. The weather is breaking um, and we'll be tested. We uh, have a full complement of lifeguards and gate attendants, police officers and, and department heads who will be working throughout the weekend uh, monitoring the situation. We've, um, we're limiting capacity 
at all three beaches, the town beaches, that is, um, as, as the state park is doing the same thing. Um, the state park is, is not allowing any walk-in traffic. We're working with some of the um, off-site traditional parking lots to ban them from uh, accepting um, parking. We're working with uh, uh, Parks and Rec to monitor Brybrook and also the uh, tenants up on Liberty Way. Um, we're going to be trying to post some signs up there. Um, the state DEEP does not want walk, walk in traffic to uh, 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 the beach mm -hmm. that is reach, has reached capacity. In the past, they've kind of turned the other way. And while you have shoulder to shoulder on the beach and, and the parking lot's filled, all these people keep streaming in. So they're trying to put an end to that. You're right, Roseanne, that's just gonna push people our way. Um, us being resident only, uh, I'll, I'll tell folks if they, if, they, if they, we don't have a lot of people watching tonight, but uh, the message is gonna be clear that um, if you bought a beach pass, it does not guarantee you, you your entrance to a park. And that's obvious. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so if you really, your intention is to be on the beach this weekend, or any weekend, get there early. Get there early. Get there early. Well, that's that's that same day at that same time. Uh, I drove through a Cheney Park. There was not a parking spot to be had. I drove through McCook's. There was not a parking space to be had. Uh, and as I said, that was a normal nice weekend, not a holiday weekend when people aren't going to be able to travel very far. So I just think we need to be extra prepared. And we are, and we're loading up. And unfortunately, our revenues are way down in Parks and Rec. They're going to be, I don't know how they're going to make it through the year. We might have to have an, a special uh, emergency appropriation um, because they are going to limit capacity and the limit. Uh, they make a lot of revenue from the non-resident folks. And, um, mm -hmm. and, um, and their costs are way up. The you know, expenses are way up with police, extra police patrols, et cetera. We are, we're going to yeah. be working on this and, um, and to this weekend will be a good test. No doubt about it. Thanks for your feedback on that. We are getting a lot of boardwalk walkers. No doubt about mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. uh, now that the restaurants and the clam bars and the ice cream shops are open, um, I'm, I'm only hopeful that some of these places will see some business and be able to uh, right the ship a little bit, if you will. Yes, yeah. indeed. Can only hope. So um, um, there, I have yeah, something if you want. Okay. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, just uh, two things. Uh, library is having a partial reopening with curbside uh, service. So you're allowed to uh, email or phone in. You can get up to five items, call, uh, drive up, uh, call, and they'll, uh, they'll get you the items. Uh, you could leave your items on a bench. All returns that come back to the library will uh, be decontaminated uh, for a time um, before they're shelved. And the uh, other big item is the... Um, Storybook Trail at Brybrook Trail, uh, Brybrook Park has been redone. I don't know if you ever walked the, the trail there, but there's a storybook tale that was a redone. Um, that's what I have. Uh, building commission tomorrow. Terrific. Fill them in. I do have I I do have one follow up too to my previous conversation, and that is that I have had a number of people contact me, both in support of the residents only and in opposition to it. Yes. And I think we need to make it clear that this is an emergency. It's a declared emergency. This is not something that's going to happen every summer. It's a We have a declared state of emergency in operation, and I think that it's our responsibility to do the best we can to follow the guidelines. We're doing the best we can, and there's no playbook. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I've gotten comments both ways. I've actually gotten a lot of comments about thank you, uh, thank, thanking me for, uh, in, the, in the police commission, I mean the uh, Parks and Rec Commission, for the action they took. This is not a new policy. This is an emergency policy. This is just something that hey, we could be midway through the summer or toward the end of the summer and open it up. Or if we... Mm -hmm. we we start not reaching capacity on some days, we could open it up to non-resident. Um, nothing to stop us from doing that, but, but, but this made a lot of sense. Um, and I think the messages have been put out by DEEP, uh, by our park system and the state, listen, don't be coming down to the shore. Um, the warnings are out there for people. If they think they're packing up the kids and driving an hour and a half to the shoreline, um, 
you know, there's a good chance that they're going to reach a, a closed gate uh, with very, very, I mean, they're talking 25% capacity, um, not even 50% at some of the state parks. Um, so, mm. and I think, uh, you know, was it, was it Saturday that was beautiful here or Sunday? I'm losing my days, but uh, we had capacity issues this past weekend too. So is today Wednesday? Just checking. Um, um, so my, my, there's, there's multiple reports. Um, first of all, there's a bad fire tonight at the, at the HEPA buildings. Um, there was, um, and I just came um, from that spot. Um, they, uh, there was a mattress fire, but it caught many, many units burned and many people were taken to the hospital and treated on site. Um, I don't think any major injuries um, or life threatening to my knowledge, more will be revealed on that. Um, but my concern for those folks, uh, at last count, we had 30 people pass away um, from the uh, a long-term care facility down at Liberty Way. And um, our hearts go out to the, the, the residents there, of course, the families who have lost residents, uh, the people in their family, um, but also the frontline workers who are working through um, such tragedy. Um, such difficult uh, times. I mean, and it says nothing less to the people at l &M and all the other places and, 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 um, and Crescent Point, the place downtown. Uh, there's many, many others. Um, but but this it, COVID hit particularly hard over at Bridebrook and um, our, our hearts and prayers go out to some folks. I had a gentleman that I met over there during the... Um, maybe the Veterans Day um, ceremony they had. Um, a lot of World War II vets. And he, um, he, he, he is an artist and he puts together a history of, the, of, the, of East Lyme. Um, and he, he, a little storyboard, if you will, and a, a painting that he wanted framed and he wanted to present it to you guys, to the selectmen uh, at a future meeting. Um, and we were gonna arrange something over the summer. And of course he, he passed away. Um, we will we will make that presentation um, with some of the frontline workers when we can be, get back into town hall, and we'll uh, proudly display it. It's um, it's cute. It's nice. I have a copy of it. So um, a lot going on. Um, a lot going on in town. We're bringing our um, town hall employees, all employees, back to work Tuesday. The doors to all our public buildings will still be locked. We're not allowing the public in yet. And then we'll move to by appointment only or escorted in to a department and then we'll fully open. And we might be fully open by June. I think 8th is a Monday, um, maybe the 15th, but um, certainly before tax bill season. But we'll be encouraging everyone to pay their bills online or by mail and not come and stand in line and be processed whenever possible. As you know, restaurants and, and uh, are allowed to be open now with outdoor dining. And it boggles my mind that we're in New England, yet the governor says outdoor dining. Um, uh, very difficult for some of these places. Some of them only have four, room for four tables. Um, very, very difficult to operate a, a restaurant properly with such small space. We've had many requests to um, create space. So you're gonna see an outdoor dining facility area at Charlie's. You're gonna see one at the Niantic Public House as long as they can secure a food truck. They can't just have beer, but they have to have the food truck too. So they're designing something for outdoors. These will be temporary. These are not long-term, but through the season until they can have people in their restaurants and their establishments. There's another couple. Oh, uh, uh, the Lime Tavern is setting up one um, along the street and, and there'll be some what they used to call mafia blocks or, you know, Jersey barriers um, to stop traffic, you know, and all that. But the live tavern, Steve's, Steve's doing it over there. And I think Smokey O'Grady's is expanding there. Uh, they have a deck, but they also want to expand into the parking lot a little bit because the deck only fits three or four chairs, um, uh, tables. So we're doing everything we can at the town hall through electronic uh, you know, through email and, and, and all, but we're doing everything we can to allow some of these restaurants to open up. Well, we've been very conservative in the past and rightfully so. We have a great town and we want to protect um, 
you know, the, the, the quality of life, you know, people live downtown. They don't want to be living on top of a bar room, but uh, we are trying to find the balance and we certainly are trying to encourage people to um, um, uh, get back into supporting our restaurants. Stores will be opening soon if they aren't already. Niantic Main Street is having a ribbon cutting tomorrow night at six o'clock. It'll be a virtual ribbon cutting. I think two people will be down on the town green cutting a ribbon, but they wanna <laughs> say they're open for business again, come on down. Uh, the fishing fleet's coming, uh, is now able to operate and a few of the others. So we're looking forward to, um, you know, uh, a very unique summer this will be, but uh, summer nonetheless, and slowly we'll get back into it. The governor announced on, uh, he's doing, he likes the 20th of the month for some reason, June 20th, something, uh, phase two is going to start in July. By July 20th, I'm going to be able to shake Dan Cunningham's hand. Um, okay. but, uh, but I'm not allowed to do that until July 20th. So we got another 60 days to go, Dano. But, um, I'm going to count it off. <laughs> count up. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, you know, nothing's going to feel normal, uh, but we're going to support our businesses and our restaurants and, 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 and do business like this for a little while. We may choose to um, sometime maybe in June or July, have these meetings in the town hall, but allow viewers to be on Zoom so they can view us or do it uh, on the YouTube channel or something where they can also give feedback. So uh, we're working through some of that and um, obviously there's a lot on our plate. So anything else from the selectmen? Mark, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, with the uh, budget that was just passed by the Board of Finance, um, I believe the police officer stayed. Did we lose the additional hours for the fire department for, to cover the night shifts? No, those were, those were left in as well. Those are left in as well. And we Great. need it because we don't have the no, volunteers right. to cover the ambulances. So Agree. Okay. I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to create fear, uh, but but. No, no, no. Those are important. I want to sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We we, we get you know, public safety first, right? Yep. Um, and uh, and all the money that the the board of ed asked for uh, was given, and then some. So. Um, that's it. That's that's our meeting. Uh, according to our agenda, we uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you all. Be safe. Good and uh, if I can help you out and answer any questions, you know how to find me. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks.